The year, 386. The place, a garden in Milan. The man, Augustine. It is August, and by all accounts, the young man is doing well. At 31 years of age, he has done well for himself. Known throughout Roman society for his intellect and oratory skills, he holds the chair of rhetoric in Milan. He has come a long way since his days as a child in North Africa, and the future holds great promise. But something was missing. For all the accolades, for all that the Roman good life offered, Augustine was unhappy. He had spent his life searching for happiness, for meaning, for something more. Born with a restless soul, he found himself still searching. Then, in the garden, an unknown voice called out, Tole lege, tole lege. Pick it up and read, the words directed. Pick it up and read. And so he did, taking the voice as a sign from God. Augustine picked up a book of scripture and read the first passage his eyes came upon. Those words would change Augustine's life and in turn the world forever. It was Paul's letter to the Romans and it directed Augustine to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he did. Shortly after his conversion in the garden, Augustine set off for the Alpine countryside to a place called Cassasiacum. He went there with his mother Monica, his son Adeodatus, and several of his closest friends. They spent their time together praying, learning, and journeying to God. It was a scene to repeat itself throughout Augustine's life, a community in one mind and one heart intent upon God. After leaving Cassisiacum to be baptized by Ambrose, the Bishop of Milan, Augustine returned to the countryside of his native North Africa. There, in the small town of Tagast, an Augustinian community emerged. Augustine would spend the next three years sharing a common life with family and friends, a life centered on dialogue, prayer, reading, and fraternity. Then, in the year 391, Augustine visited the North African city of Hippo and was ordained to the priesthood. As a priest, Augustine followed through with his vision of community life by establishing a monastery at Hippo. And when he was named Bishop of Hippo a few years later, he did not abandon his community. Rather, he established another community at the bishop's residence. For Augustine, the journey to God was best traveled when accompanied by friends. Augustine's vision for these communities was unique, however, and his vision transformed religious life. Modeled after the early Christian communities described in the Acts of the Apostles, Augustine saw religious life as a balance between contemplation and prayer and outward pastoral ministry. Rather than a life devoted entirely to prayer inside the walls of a monastery, he viewed religious life as both active and contemplative. For Augustinians, that is perhaps Augustine's greatest legacy, and it is best summed up in his Rule, a written set of instructions for community living. Augustine died in the year 430 at the age of 76, having preached and penned over five million words. But this short text of guidelines for living together has propelled the Augustinian way of life through the centuries. At its core is the message of love of God, love of neighbor. Religious communities took hold of Augustine's rule, and unofficial Augustinian communities began to take root throughout Europe until the year 1244, when Pope Innocent IV joined together a number of religious groups following Augustine's rule. In 1256, in what is known as the Grand Union, the Order of St. Augustine was officially established. The Order of St. Augustine quickly grew throughout Europe and the world. And that is where the story of the Augustinians in North America begins to unfold. In 1796, following a plea from John Carroll, the first Catholic bishop in the United States, 41-year-old Irish Augustinian Matthew Carr set sail for Philadelphia, where he established the first Augustinian community in North America, St. Augustine Church. Before a year had passed, the newly formed mission had its first vocation, Father Michael Hurley, it would be another 35 years before the order would see its first vocation ordained in America, Father James O'Donnell. 
The seeds of the Augustinian Foundation in the United States were beginning to blossom. In 1841, the Augustinians purchased a 197-acre estate just outside of Philadelphia. Sold to the Augustinians for a mere $18,000, the Bel Air estate was to become home to a formation program for the priesthood and an academy for Catholic boys. So born was Villanova College. Soon after Villanova College opened, however, the Augustinians faced a devastating setback. On May 8, 1844, nativist rioters in Philadelphia burned St. Augustine Church to the ground. The Augustinians were undeterred, however, and laid the cornerstone for the new St. Augustine Church in 1847. It still stands today as a testament to the roots and faith of the Augustinians in North America. In 1848, Villanova College was officially incorporated. The rebuilt St. Augustine Church was consecrated, and the Augustinians established communities in the Boston Archdiocese. The Augustinians in North America were here to stay. Over the next three decades, additional Augustinian communities were established in Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey. And in 1874, the first American province was officially established, the province of St. Thomas of Villanova. What was once a mission of the province of Ireland had grown into its own foundation. As the province of St. Thomas of Villanova grew, so did the reach of the Augustinians. By 1899, two friars from Villanova had traveled to Cuba to establish the first foreign mission of the American Augustinians, the first of several foreign missions the Augustinians in North America would establish. At the turn of the 20th century, the Augustinian presence in North America took another leap forward. In 1905, Chicago Archbishop James Quigley invited the Augustinians to establish a presence in Southwest Chicago. Father James Green answered that call, and within months, construction had begun for a new church, school, and monastery. They would become St. Rita Church and St. Rita High School. Growth came quickly for the Augustinians in the Midwest. By 1909, they had established three additional parishes in the Chicago area, St. Clair of Montefalco, St. Nicholas of Tolentine, and St. Gall. And soon enough, Bishops from other Midwestern dioceses began calling on the Augustinians to establish communities in their territories. The Augustinians responded, heading up parishes and founding high schools in Michigan, Illinois, and Oklahoma. These communities laid the foundation for the Augustinian Midwest province. By the late 1930s, there were nine Augustinian communities and 60 friars serving in the Midwest. The time was right to establish a new province in the United States and the province of our Mother of Good Counsel was born in 1941. Like Chicago and Philadelphia before it, the Catholic Church in Los Angeles was also in need of religious communities to answer the call of service. In 1921, Bishop John Cantwell of Los Angeles invited the Augustinians to serve in Southern California, and they responded. St. Augustine High School and St. Patrick Parish were established in San Diego, soon followed by St. Thomas Aquinas Church and Villanova Preparatory School in Ojai. In 1925, Our Lady of Good Counsel Parish in Hollywood was founded. So began the roots of the California province, which was officially established in 1969 as the province of St. Augustine. While the roots of the Chicago and California provinces began to expand in the 1920s and 30s, another province was also beginning to take shape. Following World War I, German friars began to establish their own missionary communities in the United States. And in 1925, they founded St. Rita's Church in Racine, Wisconsin. In 1938, five German friars working in the United States traveled to Nova Scotia and formed the first Augustinian community in Canada, St. Augustine Monastery. Answering the call to serve the needs of the local church, the Augustinians of Canada soon established communities in the Archdiocese of Toronto, Vancouver, and Ottawa. In 1967, the province of St. Joseph was officially established. The story does not end there. Throughout the 20th century, the Augustinians of North America continued to grow, establishing Augustinian communities at parishes and schools across the continent.
Merrimack College in Massachusetts, Resurrection of Our Lord Church in Florida, Mary Lake Monastery in Ontario, Providence Catholic High School in New Lenox, Illinois, St. Margaret of Scotland in North Carolina, St. Rita's in San Francisco, Malvern Preparatory School in Malvern, Pennsylvania, All Souls Catholic Church in Oregon, St. Bridget's Church in Toronto, St. Augustine Prep in New Jersey, Ogar Infantile in Mexico, and many, many more. Scores of Augustinian communities popped up throughout North America and beyond. Just as friars from Ireland answered the call to establish a mission in the United States, so have the North American provinces answered that same missionary call. In 1952, the Villanova and Midwest provinces together established a mission in Nagasaki, marking the return of the Augustinians to Japan after an absence of over 300 years. Over the course of the next 50 years, Augustinian communities were established in Fukuoka, Tokyo, and Nagoya. And today, Japanese-born friars are spearheading the work of the Augustinians there. Across the globe in Peru, Augustinian missionaries from the Midwest and Villanova provinces are also ministering to the needs of the church. In 1963, after a request from Pope John XXIII, the Midwest province took on the responsibility for the Diocese of Chulacanas in northern Peru. The mission has steadily grown, and today the success of the mission can be seen in the continued increase in Peruvian-born Augustinians. In 1997, the Villanova province joined with the province of Ireland and Scotland to establish a mission in South Africa. Today, friars from the Villanova and Cebu provinces work alongside the Augustinian Sisters of Mercy in ministering to the people of South Africa. These missions are a testament to the success of collaboration among provinces in the Order of St. Augustine as Augustinians worldwide respond to the needs of the Church. Here in North America and throughout the world, the Augustinians continue to respond to those needs, and increasingly, they are doing so together. Be they involved in secondary education, parish ministry, volunteer ministry, vocation or formation work, or Hispanic ministry, friars from across North America are joining together in dialogue, prayer, and fraternity, recognizing that collaboration, openness, and faith are essential to the future growth of the Augustinians. In other words, they're following the call of St. Augustine. One mind, one heart, intent upon God. <laughs>